shenanigans. All right, Robbie, you wanted to talk about adding some diversity to the Canadian le leadership. Is this truth, lies, or shenanigans? Uh, well, this is some truth. Um, this is some truth after coming on the tales of some shenanigans. Uh, so I guess we'll start with a quick history civics lesson. Um, in the U.S., the head of state and the head of government are one and the same, the president. In Canada, the queen is represented by the governor general. Uh, it, it was represented by the, the governor general is the head of state and the prime minister is the head of the government. So the governor general of Canada is mostly a ceremonial position with very little power. power. Some of the duties include swearing into office the prime minister, the cabinet ministers, chief justice of Canada, uh, summoning, proroguing, dissolving parliament, delivering speeches from the throne, uh, signing into effect official documents such as orders and councils. So really, it's a lot of ceremonial stuff in the seat of power. We have had numerous First Nations uh, representation as, as elected officials at the provincial and federal level, but never as the governor general. Now, the reason we are without a governor general right now is because Julie Payette uh, has stepped down on January 21st amidst allegations of bullying, harassment, and creating a very toxic uh, work environment at a federal level. So just had to walk away. So uh, on screen, thank you so much, uh, Neo. That is uh, Grand Chief Arlen Dumas of the Assembly of uh, Manitoba Chiefs. And he's gone public saying that he wants to see a First Nations person replace Julie Payette as the Governor General. And the reasoning is that such an appointment would pay respect to the spirit and intent of the treaties between Canada's First Nations people and the Crown. Um, so my question to my co-host is, should Justin Trudeau appoint a First Nations person as the next Governor General? Let's start with Johnny. Yeah, um, I feel like I understand that it doesn't hold a lot of power. Um, but I do feel at the same time that it's a respect thing. It's an honor thing. Um, I know that also, it's kind of, because I know that also in the article it stated that maybe that Canada isn't really ready for that because maybe it's the actually sending the wrong message and kind of showing this illusion of progress or some something like that, so to speak. So I can understand that, but I feel like, well, that, is that not part of the progress is to put somebody in that position. And although he doesn't have the power to take people out or change laws or anything like that, it's like maybe that influence is giving somebody who else, who, uh, other indigenous people, some type of inspiration or some type of confidence to actually affect law and do things like that. So I feel like, yeah, why not let him, you know, hold that position? You, you make a great point because even if, if it's false, you know, um, representation, it's still, the visual representation of someone in that position is valuable in itself because, you, like, if you look at, um, for example, Kamala uh, Harris being the VP, when young girls see that, that's a significant thing to them, even if it were just if she never becomes president, if she never becomes president of the United States, just the fact that she's in that position still gives young women, young black girls, young Asian American girls that hope or that that inspiration that they can accomplish. Um, so I, that was a great point, Johnny. Um, now, just, so just well, go ahead, go ahead. A minute later. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about the, what she just said, go ahead. Well, I was just going to counter that point with Kamala Harris is qualified, though. Like, I wouldn't want oh. there to be a, a black VP just for the sake of having a black VP. No. That's not mm -hmm. representation. That's a good um, and so I, I appreciate that, you know, even when Biden came out actually and said one, he was going to pick a, a female VP. I kind of had an issue with that. I did too. I'm not because I was just like, you know, you know, we don't want participation trophies over here. Mm -hmm. If it's a qualified female VP, 
absolutely. But if you're just, you know, um, filling the position because you're posturing, you're, you know, you're just trying to seem like, oh um, okay, I'm pandering to the female audience, then we don't need that. That's not representation. So yes, Kamala, love her in that position because she's qualified. She's qualified. Um, and that would be my, that would be my position for if this were an appointment in Canada that had some weight, I would say, yes, um, I, I don't have a problem with picking someone from the indigenous community as long as they're qualified. And I'm sure there are tons of qualified people from that community who could serve in this position. But just, just, don't throw people a bone. People don't wanna be thrown a bone. Um, that's, that's, that's patronizing, it's offensive. And like some people say, it makes people, give people a false sense of security. Okay, so we put a Native American um, in this position, maybe they'll be quiet. Maybe it will pacify them. Maybe they will shut up now. That's not what we want. You want someone in there that is, that has merit and that can do something. So yeah, so to answer your question very quickly, Bob, yes, I do think it's a good thing. And hopefully in the future, it will lead for it will lead to consideration for people who have experience from that community to be considered. That's that's what we want. That's what we want. I like Daria Winner's response to you, by the way. He said, but he knew women who were qualified for the position before he made the announcement, which makes sense actually. Um but I mean, yeah, he knew women who were qualified, but so to he just knew he was say, going to pick a qualified woman. He just was saying that I'm going to pick a woman. What if there was a more qualified man? What if there was a more qualified black man? We've never had a black male vice president either. I mean, he so, did box himself in, and I just personally didn't like it either at the beginning. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm happy with the you know with Kamala as our VP, um, but like you said, I I just I don't like those type of statements, especially since I think Biden was pandering. Right. I think he was pandering to the community. All right. So so Robbie, my answer to the question. So if the numbers are right on Wikipedia, there are just under two million Indigenous people in Canada, and although there, you know, although there wasn't the same level of like genocide that there was in America. There was certainly a massive effort to assimilate and eliminate the culture itself. Um, now, personally, I think diversity should exist everywhere. You know, it's frustrating that even in democracies, we've been in the habit of giving power to white males throughout history. Um, you know, granted, historically, white males have effectively denigrated everyone else, again, historically, um, to the point that other groups have historically accepted themselves as inferior. Um, you know, it's great that upcoming generations and current generations are seeing through the facade. So when we see Biden diversifying his cabinet, you know, making the statement that power and capability does not and should not depend on the way you look, you know, I think other countries like Canada should definitely take note of that fact. You know, I, I understand Lizzie's counterpoint. And we just don't want anybody in those positions. But the, the fact remains, there are qualified people for those positions if we're looking for those qualified people in those groups. But we've eliminated those groups for so long um, that we can't even find, you're not even, you're not find, they're not finding them because they're not really looking where they are. Um, and then, of course, they've been, a lot of those groups, even indigenous groups, have been held back. So, you know, the qualifications are, you know, there are fewer qualified people because of, um, you know, a lot of the problems. No, RB, I know you didn't get to really respond to your own question. So about 30 seconds. Sure. Um, so yeah, naysayers will say that it is a token position with all the symbolism and none of the power. But like you've alluded to, representation is key. And having the ear of those in power should not be dismissed. And it can yield significant benefits when you're trying, when you're working towards resolving existing inequities. Just like Biden's cleaning house and appointing a variety of members in different positions of uh, or su supporting positions, he's bringing that diversity. Um, I believe that having a First Nations Governor General will be a good step towards reconciliation. It doesn't fix the history of treaties not being honored, landed resource disputes, racial issues, but it's a start. Uh, representation and influence are are key factors in affecting change. I think the the the. Um way to resolve that is just not to pick a token, not to just pick someone who is gonna be a seat filler. Like I said, pick someone from that community 
who has merit, who has some history, who can make a difference, who has a voice. Like, you know, we talk about, you know, Biden saying that he wanted to, you know, have a woman as a VP. I mean, he could have easily picked Candace Owens. (laughs) <laughs> he could have easily picked, you know, a female comedian. He could have easily picked any woman that had no merit, no right to be the vice president of well, the United I States. Knew, I think he knew when he made the statement that he didn't intend to do that. But that's, but that's, you open it up to that type of interpretation. Like, I don't even think he needed to make the statement to begin with. And Rob, I think that's completely different than what you're talking about here. Um, but I don't even think he needed to make the statement to begin with. Like, if you have women that you are thinking about for VP, just pick the woman. We don't need some yeah. grandiose statement. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Agree. With that. I, I actually, I still agree with it, even though I'm still making the counterpoint. Uh, but uh, Daria Winter says, <laughs> no, no, no. He was not pandering. Women nor people of color have, uh, nor people of color have not overlooked, not been overlooked because they are unqualified. These are the excuses people use to ignore qualified women and minorities. Like when it says, Go ahead. I disagree. I, I disagree. Fine. I disagree, Daria. I know you. Respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Winter says genocide in Canada versus genocide in the U.S. was pretty much the same as far as I know, maybe not in the coldest part. I don't know if it was the same. I don't know uh, from... Well, the numbers are different. Yeah. The numbers are, right. like, the population numbers are different. So, and well, you, again, I don't, I don't think we should compare. That's not something I, yeah, we I agree with you. We shouldn't. Yep. All right. Uh, Jacqueline Robinson says Biden and his team seriously vetted potential running mates before deciding to say that. Um, Liana Jones says not just black or Asian American girls, all girls. Uh, George Fournier said, excellent point, Gianni, excellent point. Uh, Vanessa G says, would be a good step to reconciliation. However, First Nations people do not necessarily pay homage to the queen, nor recognize the queen's power in Canada. So there is a conflict of interest. All right now, speak on it, speak on it. Excellent point, Vanessa. Excellent point. All right, we got to get on to the next hot topic. We are way behind on time. All right. Truth, lies, 